Hi everyone. Uh, so we have been discussing the Protestant Reformation in Europe and you know, the Catholic Church's response to that movement over the last week or so here in class. Uh, today I showed you some examples of Catholic propaganda. One example, of course, is the one that's displayed here on the screen. Uh, remember here, it's, you know, this particular work is depicting you know, the Protestant leader, Martin Luther, right here. Uh, as an instrument of the devil, right? You've got this uh, creature, devil-like creature, I suppose, uh, that is playing Martin Luther as his instrument that is using Martin Luther, uh, I guess, to spread his heretical message, right? So for tonight's assignment, uh, I would like you to analyze another image, another uh, piece of artwork here from the time period. Uh, I'd like you to analyze it for meaning. So this particular image that you're looking at now is, or it was a woodcut. Uh, it was by the artist Lucas Cranach the Younger, who was a German artist and supporter of Martin Luther. So the title of this work is True and False Religion. And obviously it is an example of Protestant propaganda, right? So I showed you Catholic propaganda in class. This would be an example now of Protestant propaganda uh, being produced during the time of the Reformation. So if you look at this particular piece, uh, the pillar in the middle here, I'm kind of pointing at it, uh, the pillar in the middle of this work is the dividing marker between the true faith of the Protestants versus the false teachings, if you will, of the Catholic Church. All right, remember, this is from the perspective of a Protestant artist here. So what I want you to do right now is pause the video for a minute and try to decide which, which one of these sides uh, is representing the true religion of Protestants and which one is representing the false religion uh, of Catholics. So take a minute to do that. All right, based on the imagery alone, hopefully you were able to figure out that this side over here, this side represents the Protestants, and this side over here, kind of dreary, stormy, uh, this would be representing the Catholics. All right, so now that you know what each side represents, I want you to try to find more specific examples, okay, where the artist is attempting, you know, to show characteristics of the true religion of Protestants versus the false religion of Catholics. So obviously the examples that I'm looking for would be, you know, he's going to be trying to paint the Catholics as, you know, doing things incorrectly, as veering away from the message of God, whereas, uh, you know, over here he's going to be showing ways that the Protestants are, you know, practicing their religion uh, in, a, in a proper way. All right, so once again, I would like for you to pause, okay, pause the video uh, while you search for some examples here. And in your notebook, if you could just make a list, okay, of your observations. Uh, and once you have done that, you can resume the video and uh, we'll talk about some of the more specific examples that you may have found. All right, so some of the some of the examples that you may have stumbled across here as you were looking at the uh, at this piece, well, there, there's a number of things. So what I'll do is I'll kind of we'll, we'll touch on each side here. Let's start with the Protestants, okay, over here. So again, uh, if this is the true religion, uh, what what about it is is better, right? That's kind of what we're looking for here. One thing you may have taken note of is that the uh, the preacher here at the pulpit has a direct beam, right? You kind of see connecting him uh, with God. And one thing that I think is notably present on the pulpit on one side but missing on the other would be the Bible, right? So the suggestion here from this artist that Protestant uh, pastors were preaching from the Bible, were using scripture to guide their message, whereas on the other side, you know, you see the Bible is absent, that the, uh, the Catholic priest, um, you know, is just kind of uh, delivering his own message uh, to the laity below. 
in addition, speaking of the lady, speaking of the church followers, you know, I think when you look at both sides, uh, you will notice that it does seem to be a bit more solemn on this side. People are paying closer attention to the message being delivered by the pastor. On this side, you do see some people paying attention in the forefront, but there's a lot of other activity uh, here in the background as well. You might have noticed uh, this one person right here. Uh, there are some playing cards following uh, or falling, excuse me, uh, falling out of their pocket, which would perhaps suggest you know that they were gambling or uh, might suggest other you know vice on the part of this uh, particular person here. In addition, uh, on the Protestant side, you see a couple of things that would set the Protestants aside, uh, apart from con uh, from the Catholics. You have communion, right, being given to, um, you know, to in both forms, first of all, and also to both sexes. Uh, and just in general, like I said, general imagery, you've got this light, airy feel, uh, clouds, and whereas, of course, on the other side, it's a very different look. You've got, you know, kind of greed and disorder that are reigning here on the Catholic side. So a couple of other observations or things you may have noticed I told you there was no Bible here in front of the Catholic priest. If you look closely here, and you might zoom in on it, um, you can actually see there is a little, uh, little devil-like creature, and it looks like he's actually wearing a Pope hat, and he is blowing smoke, blowing uh, smoke into the ear of the priest here. So I guess the suggestion once again that, you know, that the the, the corrupt popes of this time period in Rome are kind of polluting the message. Uh, that the that the priest is giving here. Uh, you also see people around here carrying goods, right? That are uh, you know collected goods that they've collected to the table where they are purchasing indulgences. So if you look in the, the bottom corner here, remember we talked about Martin Luther's uh, criticism of of the sale of indulgences and how he felt that was a corrupt process. Well, you can see some of the you know some of the exchanges being made down here. Uh, goods, money being uh, exchanged for these indulgences, right? That would, in theory, uh, you know, help people uh, make it from purgatory uh, to heaven, all right? So you can, once again, you see uh, the Pope down here in the corner who is, you know, kind of guarding his treasure rather than participating in the service. So hopefully you were able to pick up on some of these things as you looked at this piece. We'll be doing this throughout the school year. So I thought this video might be a good kind of introduction to how we'll be uh, breaking down artwork, political cartoons, things of that nature uh, throughout the school year. We, you know, we'll always be kind of searching uh, for meaning, uh, kind of taking part in analysis. Uh, and so this is kind of a practice that we'll be taking part in throughout the school year. Thanks. I'll see you tomorrow.